To begin the photo emulsion process, you must make sure you're in a dim area away from direct UV light. In my classroom, I typically close the blinds, but for the sake of the video, I left them open so there would be some type of light source for the GoPro to record. Speedball Photo Emulsion Diazo is not as UV light um, sensitive as your commercial photo emulsions, so it's very friendly for a uh, classroom art teacher or for someone who's trying to create a screen in their own uh, room. That is the Diazo kit. Uh, it's in two parts. So it comes with a larger bottle, which is a photo emulsion, and comes with a smaller bottle, which is the uh, photo synthesizer. The synthesizer bottle feels completely empty, um, but it does have a thin layer of chemical inside of the bottle. You take the smaller bottle and you fill it up halfway close it and then shake it up as best as you can. Um, I hit the bottom of it, I squeeze it. You're trying to get as much of the chemical to break from the lining of the bottle so it mixes with the water. So I, I tap the bottom, I squeeze it, uh, I shake it as hard as I can. Um, when it's completely um, mixed, you open your photo emulsion, which is a bigger bottle. The photo emulsion is a very light baby blue color. Now uh, you make sure that you have everything broken up in your synthesizer bottle and you pour that into your photo emulsion and this causes a chemical reaction which is sensitive to UV light. Um, but as long as you're in a dim area or classroom or bedroom, um, it won't affect it too much. So I take an old paintbrush handle and I just stir it up as best I can. I stir it for maybe about a minute or two until I see that it's one solid color. It's typically like an army green color. Um, you just want to make sure there's no uh, swirls in it where you can see baby blue or um, unmixed areas. Once I feel that the photo emulsion is fully mixed, I cap off the bottle ensuring that any unwanted UV rays do not expose the photo emulsion. Any materials that still have photo emulsion on them, I rinse off with cold water. I do have to warn that photo emulsion does stain and I recommend wearing an apron because it will not come off your clothes. Now I'm preparing to apply the photo emulsion to my still screens. The ones I'm using today are the speedball version. You can find them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or any local uh, art or craft store. I like to apply my photo emulsion in an area that is very easy to clean. So in my classroom, the tables are very easy to clean with water. But if you're working in a bedroom, uh, make sure you put down newspaper or a tarp. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, photo emulsion stains very easily. So this is the underside, the bottom of the, of the silk screen. I'm pouring a small amount of photo emulsion to the bottom of it. I will then spread it using a speedball squeegee. You can also find the squeegee in the same area. You'll find the silk screen and the diazo kit at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. When spreading the folding motion with the squeegee, the goal is to get a nice thin layer, uh, eliminating any highly saturated areas. Um, these areas that are highly saturated tend to not cure in the drying process, uh, ruining your image once you try to burn the image onto it. The best way to eliminate these highly saturated folding emulsion areas is to drag the edge of the squeegee across them collecting any excess onto the squeegee and off of the silk screen. Notice how I tilt my silk screen vertically while I drag the edge of the squeegee across it to eliminate any uh, saturated areas. I find this technique to be the best way of handling the silk screen in order to remove any pockets or highly saturated areas of photo emulsion. Once you're happy with the end result of your um, application of photo emulsion, you must put it in an area that is not directly in UV light. So in my classroom, I have a cabinet that has shelves in it and I can slide the silk screen into that and lock it away so that no one touches it. The silk screen must dry overnight. I typically wait about eight hours before I expose it to UV light. If you do not have access to a cabinet like this in your classroom or in your bedroom, obviously, uh, any area that is not directly uh, hit by sunlight or UV light will work. 
So for instance in your bedroom you can use your closet or you can use the drawer in a nightstand. Uh, in my home studio I actually use a TV moving box. So it's just a large box that you could put a TV in and I just put my silk screen in that and I cover it. The main goal is to not expose your screen during the drying process. This is when it's its most vulnerable. So you want to make sure not to open the door to your storage unit during those eight hours of drying. You also do not want to remove your screen until you are ready to burn your image directly onto it using a UV source. Your last step is to remove any photo emulsion from any materials that you use during the process. You must scrub it off your squeegee using cold water, off your hands, and off the actual photo emulsion bottle. Once this photo emulsion fully dries, it is very hard to remove. So you want to take it off now while it's still soft. While the emulsion dries on my screen, I prepare my artwork for my image transfer. You see there that's a package of transparency film that I buy from Staples. You can get a pack of 100 for $46. Um, I use that with a copier to um, copy over my original artwork onto a transparency. Uh, if you work at a school or if you have access to a copier, like say you go to um, Office Depot and you can use their copier to create your artwork. But you will need to transfer your original artwork onto a transparent material. Some people like to take the transparency copy and just trace over their original artwork with a Sharpie. Um, I've seen some people um, take a copy sheet and a rub baby oil uh, completely over the whole image until the white of the paper turns clear and the ink stays black that works as well uh, for me the easiest, easiest thing to use is just a copier so here is the next day and you see me preparing my uh, classroom to actually burn the image so I turned off my lights um, I actually closed the blinds um, this time so I wouldn't overexpose the screen too much um, I opened up my storage unit that has my screens uh, I just randomly choose a sill screen to use um, in this process you don't have to be too fast but you don't want to sit um, on a screen too long you don't want to just leave it on the table and forget about it the longer it sits in UV light uh, the more exposed it's going to become uh, the harder image is going to be to transfer so I have a setup here it's just a small little table and I have a um, a bulb which is a number one flood bulb um, on a pie reflector from Home Depot. Um, I put my transparency artwork uh, face down on the bottom side of my silk screen. I lay a thin sheet of plexiglass on top so that the transparency doesn't move. Um, one thing that I want you to pay attention to is the distance between the bulb and the image. Um, Speedball recommends for this size screen um, that the bulb is about 18 inches away from the image that you're burning. Um, the hard part is trying to figure out how long to expose the screen. So for me in this environment and that distance and that size of still screen, um, I've found that anywhere from three minutes to five minutes will expose my screen properly. If the bulb is new, three minutes works fairly well. Um, this bulb is a little older. I used it last year, so I found five minutes works. It's usually trial and error. Um, it took me a good amount of weeks to figure out how to burn this uh, process, how to, to expose it properly in my room. Um, I overexposed, I underexposed silk screens over and over again until I got it just right. Um, but once you have it set up, it's, it's fairly easy to do. So once the image is being burned onto the screen, you do not want to stand over it because you can cast shadows and get unwanted blemishes on your image. So what's happening now is the bulb is curing the emulsion around the image. Where the image is on the transparency, it's blocking the UV light. So that's keeping that area soft. So when I go to um, rinse off the screen using water, those soft areas will break it through and create a stencil for you. So the timer's gone off after the five minutes, so I shut it off. Now I need to go over to my, my light source setup and shut it off. You do not want to wait too long to turn off the light because you do not want to overexpose your screen. If you leave your image under the light too long, you will overexpose it, uh, curing the emulsion um, 
too much curing it underneath your image and when you go to rinse off your screen none of it will be um, transferred because all of the emulsion has cured so in order for the image to um, transfer to the silk screen you must use water the soft emulsion reacts to the water and washes off while the emulsion that was not blocked by the image the black of the ink um, is hardened so that stays so I've seen people do it where they put the screen in a simple sink and they just run water on it and they scrub the back of the screen with a toothbrush. That works fairly well. It just takes a very long time. Um, if you're working in your house, you can take it outside and use a simple water hose with an attachment. I've even, I've even used um, my thumb and just sprayed it as hard as I could with my thumb and that works as well. Um, in my classroom, I'm fortunate enough to have an outdoor area, so I have a high pressure uh, gun, and I use that. That is the fastest, cleanest way of doing it. If you've ever taken a silk screen class in college, that's typically how you do it. Um, I use a very simple electric uh, pressure washer from uh, Lowe's. I believe it's like $99. It's a Greenworks model, and I, I'll show it at the end of this video. But there's a Harbor Freight knockoff too that I think costs maybe $50 that you can use. If you wanted to use that in your own home if you plan to do many screens um, but you you simply putting it in the sink with the toothbrush works you just have to take longer on it uh, and you have to be careful not to scrub too hard with the toothbrush because that can cause um, blowouts where you scrub so hard in one spot too long that it just breaks the emulsion off even though it's cured so you just have to be careful you, if you do use the sink so now um, I rinsed the front and back of the screen Anywhere that the emulsion was blocked by the ink of my transparency was soft so the water blew that you know, emulsion off, it washed it off. The emulsion that was not uh, blocked by ink hardened and cured so that stayed. That created my stencil of my Bigfoot Lurker. So looking at that image, I don't have any major blowouts uh, around him or below him. Um, so I would say that that screen is printable. So I would now take it into my room. I could either let it sit on a drying rack overnight or I can um, dry it using a hair dryer. So for the sake of the video, I'm gonna use a hair dryer to dry this so that I can print, so I can show you how to print with this screen. So using a household uh, hair dryer, you want to dry the front and back of the screen, making sure that you do not sit in one spot too long because the heat of the hair dryer can melt the silk of the screen. So you wanna move back and forth, up and down, making sure that the wood frame and the screen itself is completely dry. You do not wanna work with a wet screen. You do not wanna get your material that you're gonna print on wet and you don't want your ink to get wet. So once it's completely dry, we'll take it over to our printing area. These are the supplies that you're gonna to use to print. So I have a gallon of black Speedball fabric ink. Okay, it's very permanent, so you have to be careful not to get that on your clothes, it will not come off. Um, packaging tape, you're going to need that. A pair of scissors, your screen obviously, and um, whatever material you're going to print on. So I have a t-shirt, I'm going to print on that. Um, also you're going to need a piece of cardboard or mat board, something that's going to slide into the shirt to make sure that it stays nice and flat and that the ink doesn't soak through and um, stain the inside of the shirt or the back of the shirt. So that mounting board that I have it's going to go inside of the shirt so here I'm preparing my screen you're going to take your packaging tape and you're going to tape all along the edge of the screen on the bottom side just like so like you see there um, I'm going to go all the way around this is to make sure that the ink doesn't seep through the edges and um, spew through the bottom through the edges you don't want that ink to fall into areas of your t-shirt or uh, paper or whatever material you're, you're printing on. You don't want any unwanted areas of ink. So this just kind of is insurance um, to make sure that the ink itself stays where it needs to stay. It, needs to, it stays on the top of the screen. It doesn't seep through the bottom. Also, if you see any areas like little pinholes, like where the emulsion blew through or um, Sometimes screens have very small little nicks in them, especially this one's very old. It had a very small little hole. Um, I plugged that hole using a small piece of tape. So tape is there to 
pretty much block any areas that you do not want ink on. Okay, so I have it completely taped. So now here is my t-shirt. As previously, as previously stated, um, you need some type of substrate that's gonna slide inside of the shirt to make sure that it's nice and flat. You don't get any wrinkles in it. It also prevents any ink from soaking through the shirt and um, staining the inside of your shirt or seeping all the way through to the back. Um, technically, it should be a little tighter so it's stretching the t-shirt. Um, I couldn't find a piece of cardboard that was big enough. That's an XL t-shirt. So I just went with what I had. But you get the idea. Just find a piece of cardboard or flat piece of material that will stretch your shirt. I know at Hobby Lobby they sell t-shirt templates. Um, you can buy one of those. I think they're less than $2. Um, I just don't have any. I usually just use cardboard. So I make sure the shirt is nice and flat. It's, um, it's even on both sides. It's not curled over. That when I start to print on it, I make sure that um, it's gonna print on a nice flat surface. So now we're ready to print. We have our silk screen prepped uh, and ready to go. It has packaging tape on the underside to make sure that no ink seeps through. Our t-shirt is nice and flat with the substrate inside of it to make sure that no ink seeps through and saturates the inside or the underside of the shirt. So all we have to do now is ink the screen. So right now I'm grabbing a squeegee. So we're gonna need that to transfer the ink through the image. Um, I have a very simple disposable spoon. I just scoop um, a generous portion of ink. It's better to have more ink than you need. Um, that way you're not um, running out of ink while you're trying to print. So I put a good amount down, maybe two or three scoops. Um, and I spread it across the whole image. I, have, I make sure that the ink is wider than the images. That way I know that the whole image is going to be completely covered in ink when I do try to transfer it over. Okay, so I carefully take the screen over. I make sure not to drop any ink on my shirt or on myself. I put the screen on top of the t-shirt, um, aligning the image on the shirt. Uh, there's several ways of doing it. The best I found in my room is to look at where the image corresponds to the armpits. I try to make sure it's centered between the armpits and I also look at the top of the image and how close it is to the collar. Um, I typically try to print my Bigfoot um, lurker closer to the, to the chest and stomach area than the neck. So once I'm satisfied with the positioning of it, I take my squeegee and I create what's called a flush stroke. So I tilt the screen up and I spread the ink across the image first. Okay, then I tap down and make sure the ink falls. And I gently put the screen back down. So using your non-dominant hand, you wanna hold the screen down. And using your dominant hand, you want to press down with the squeegee and slide the ink across the image. Notice that my squeegee is not completely tilted. It's still very vertical. It's just slightly tilted. That's gonna uh, force the ink to go through your image, the open area of the screen, and go through and actually print onto your screen. If you tilt the squeegee too much, it's just gonna slide over the image and not push through. So you need to make sure you're pressing down and sliding the squeegee at the same time. So after a few strokes, I lift the still screen up and the image transferred. You do not have to continuously stroke over the image. Um, the more you do it, the, the more ink you're going to lay down. Um, but you also run the chance of creating a double image because the t-shirt tends to want to move. So if you look at the image here, it's pretty clean. It's very accurate to my drawing. There's a very minor blowout uh, around his neck area, but I can live with that. If I wasn't happy with the screen, I could start to process all over again, or I can take screen filler. Um, Speedball sells a very small bottle of screen filler. It's a, it's a red fluid and you take a paintbrush and you would cover any little pinholes or blowouts that are on your image. You would cover those and then you won't, you won't have these um, imperfections of printing on your t-shirt or substrate, whatever you're, you're going to end up printing on. But I'm fairly satisfied with this image. Um, using it in the classroom, um, the students really do enjoy um, using this setup. So the next setup 
for the next step is to take the um, silk screen and wash it. You do not want to let ink dry on your screen. Once it's dry, it's insanely hard to clean off. And this is water soluble ink, so it's very easy to clean as long as it's not dry. So I take it outside and I use my high pressure hose and I wash it all off. If you're working at home, just put it in the sink and carefully wash it off using a sponge, like just a common dishwashing uh, sponge or like a car wash sponge. Um, I recommend using a sponge with water uh, because the splashback of the ink um, will stain your clothes and your skin. So you wanna make sure that you're not hitting the, the ink of the screen too hard when you're working in a sink because you're so close to it. It, it will ruin your clothes, it will not come off. So just be careful cleaning it. But you wanna get all the ink off the back and the front and off the frame. Uh, if you don't, it tends to clog the screen. It tends to ruin your silk uh, material that's on the screen. And you'll have to repair it by replacing the screen itself. So I highly recommend not being lazy and just take it outside and wash it off with a water hose. And if you don't have that luxury, just put it in your sink and you know, carefully just wash it off using a, uh, a simple dish washing sponge or car wash sponge. So that was my um, pressure washer, real simple, green works, hooked up to a water hose. If you're interested in that, like I said, Lowe's sells it for $100. Harbor Freight has the, the knockoff for $50. So once I'm done with the screen, um, I left it on the drying rack to dry overnight. It's there if I want to use it another day. Um, take my squeegee and a small little Scott Bright um, rag to clean off the squeegee, get all the ink off of that. It's the same thing, you do not want the ink to dry on your uh, squeegee, so you want to clean that. And your very last step is heat setting the image. You have to heat the ink on the screen, on the actual t-shirt to make it permanent. And that way it doesn't wash off when you uh, put it in the, in the washer and dryer. I tend to use a heat gun because it gets um, extremely hot. Um, Speedball Ink recommends heat setting to 180 degrees to 210 degrees. So I believe that this heat gun on the low setting uh, reaches about 200 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So it sets the ink very quickly because the heat gun heats up very, very quickly. Um, so it saves you time. Um, I've seen people use irons and iron uh, typically only reaches about 180 degrees and that's if you have a really good one. So sometimes if you do iron it, um, it still doesn't properly set the ink into the actual fabric and it's not as permanent as it can be. So I just found that a, a very cheap heat gun from Harbor Freight, I believe this one cost me $20, works just fine. It does it faster and it does it more efficiently. Um, but you do need to make sure that you heat set your ink after you're completely done printing it. If you do not, <clears throat> after you wear it and you wash it, the ink will fade, um, or worse, it will actually run and ruin the image and then ruin the rest of the clothes that you have in your wash. So you have to make sure that you heat set it. Especially if you're going to screen t-shirts to sell, you do not want to sell a product that fades quickly or uh, ruins people's clothes when they go to wash it. So you need to make sure that it's properly set. Uh, Speedball is very, very uh, specific that it needs to be between 180 to 210 degrees to completely set it permanently into the actual fabric. But this is the whole process I use in my own classroom to uh, expose screens for t-shirts using full emulsion. Um, for the classroom setting or for your own residential, like home studio, or um, just for the hobbyist, um, Speedball uh, Diazo Fluid is the, the, the most friendly for, uh, for us because we don't have access to a dark room. Um, so I feel that Diazo does a fairly good job for very simple drawings. Now, if you wanted to get very detailed and do like um, photo transfers, the Dazzle still works really well, it's just not as detailed. Um, if you really did want to get a very clean photo, um, photographic like photo emulsion transfer, you would have to look into the more commercial brands of photo emulsion, but then you would have to use a professional uh, darkroom. 
Um, so if you don't have access to that, the Diazo works just just fine. It, it's it's a very very good product in my opinion. I've used it for years. I even used it in college uh, for some of my projects. Um, but this setup that, that I just showcased to you can easily be adapted to uh, a bedroom. I use the same uh, process in my home studio. Um, I just take the pressure washer outside and I hook it up to a hose there. Um, I have a light bulb hooked up to a um, a Pi reflector in my in my studio. Um, it could all be adapted very easily uh, to just a simple room. And for the drying process, like I said, I use a big TV moving box. So while it dries, the screen just sits in this big TV moving box so that it's not exposed directly to UV light. Um, I will make sure to um, add a supply list in the description of this video so that you know exactly what materials I used and where to buy it from. That way you're not just guessing and, and buying random things. Uh, you'll get to use exactly what I used in this video. So my purpose of this video is just to hopefully help somebody create a silk screen using the photo motion setup in their own home or in their classroom. Um, but I will be making several videos like this, how to's, art uh, techniques, so forth. So if you have not subscribed, please do so. Uh, subscribe and just keep an eye out for my videos. I'm gonna try to upload at least every week, if not twice a month.